You're watching Chris and the Donnas. Hello, it's a beautiful summer evening. The uh, sun is about an hour away from sunset and it's actually pretty cool and comfortable out here. And so I'm gonna take advantage of the nice comfortable weather and I'm gonna trim some of these low hanging tree limbs that are a part of the lot of this house, which is right next door to the house where Ladonis and I live. Uh, but we are responsible for cutting the grass of this lot, our lot, Dennis's parents' lot, and then a lot on the other side, as well as the lots back behind here. So roughly about five acres every time we cut the grass. And this particular lot has lots of trees and shrubs on it, and many of them have got some low-hanging limbs. So over the course of however many days it takes, to trim them up to make our job easier of cutting the grass. We're going to do it and uh, take you along for the ride. So as you can see, looking at the back of this house, you can see just how low these particular tree limbs uh, are hanging. And they belong to this really big tree, not too far away from the house, that provides excellent shade for this area of the lot. Um, but it also extends around here. There's some low hanging limbs right here where I'm near where I'm standing. So I'm going to start with this tree in this area closest to the house and then make my way to as much as time allows to uh, get some of these other low hanging limbs. Okay, so Dakota's out here inspecting my work. But here you can see all the different limbs that have come off of this one tree and not only does it include limbs with leaves on them but quite a few of them were dead didn't have anything on them so they needed to come down anyway but this is how much came off of just this one tree and now if I step back give you kind of the after view now you can see that they're not obstructing the view and you can see now most of the back of the house and over there is the Donus messing with his phone. The Donus. Now, before I clean up these limbs and sweep them up into a pile, there's this one outgrowth from this big old tree. This is actually a root that has sprung off it's trying to create its own little tree or shrub off of it. And it's angled and it's a nuisance. It's in the way when we're trying to cut around it. So I'm gonna cut it down with what I can of the loppers and then may use a saw later to get the thicker part at the bottom. Okay, so that's all there's left of that outgrowth. So here's the remains of it. And the Donis being so nice, and he started raking up the pile for me. Dakota has her sights on something. Not sure what it is. Don't see anything down there by Burl Shed, as we call it. Now that the Donis has finished raking up the debris, TJ and Dakota are checking out this pile that they've not seen before. And TJ's on to bigger and better things, apparently. Good morning. So I'm continuing uh, with the tree trimming project that I started yesterday evening. This is the tree in front of this house that I had trimmed uh, last night. And if you make out this little a stem that's left of that outgrowth from the root of this large tree. So this morning, I'm gonna start with trimming the low hanging branches of this tree right here. You can see how low some of those branches are hanging right there. 
And then as the sun gets a little further up and provides more shade, I'm then going to trim some of these low hanging branches for this tree right here immediately behind me. So a couple more big trees near this first tree that I trimmed last night. So let's get started. Okay, so I have trimmed all the low limbs below this tree. Uh, you can see here uh, the debris uh, around all sides of the tree. And I am now able to walk all around this tree underneath with plenty of headspace above me. And of course, while I'm riding a lawnmower, I won't have any trouble with low, low hanging limbs uh, getting in the way. Uh, in this particular tree, there were some low hanging branches close to the trunk. And then of course, uh, some hanging way out uh, in the canopy. So we've got uh, both areas of that tree trimmed up. And now I'm gonna sweep up uh, all these uh, limbs into a single pile off to the side. Uh, to be put into a dump trailer later on. Okay, so I've got the debris from this tree raked up into a pile. It's over here on the edge of all these trees where we can easily get to it with a trailer later on and load them up to take out for dumping at some point. Um, it's When you're working during the summertime, Anytime you can work in a shaded environment as opposed to out in the sun is definitely preferable. There's been a nice breeze blowing this morning, so I'm happy about that. Even then though, uh, with all the snipping and raking and all that, you still uh, work, get a good workout and uh, need to take a break from time to time. So that's what I'm gonna do next, is I'll just quickly go in, get some water, rest for a few minutes. I'm gonna come back out I think I'm gonna tackle this tree next. It has just a few low hanging limbs around it. And I can actually add that debris to this first pile from yesterday since it's closer. So that's what we will do next. Okay, so I've had my water and now I've, I've come back out here. The first tree that I did yesterday is over here. You'll notice that most of the growth from that tree goes over here to the left toward the house. And that's because it's competing with what I'm calling tree number three, which I just now finished doing some light trimming underneath. Uh, and you'll notice the left side of it uh, is competing for space with the first tree. So most of its growth is over to the right. And then right here is the second tree that I did earlier this morning. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the smaller amount of debris that's under the third tree. Okay, so closer into the trunk of this third tree, there was quite a bit of dead limbs. So I went ahead and trimmed them first, then worked my way out to the outer canopy. And you can see that there's not as much debris from this particular tree that I had to uh, trim. Uh, the, the branches were not hanging down as low as on the first two trees. And it was a little bit overhanging above this hedge that I had to trim down because eventually they would get lower and lower if I did not do so. So I'm going to clean up, or rake up all this debris and I'm going to add it to this first pile from yesterday. All right, so we've got the area under tree number three swept up, including the little bit of debris that was around here on the outside of the edge below these sets of branches. So all of that debris has been added to pile number one. All right, so over here is tree number two that I did this morning. All right, and over there where the rake is leaning up against the tree, we're gonna call that tree number four. And that's the next one that I'm going to trim the low hanging limbs on. And as I step here a little closer, to get a better look at some of these low hanging branches, which also includes some dead limbs here. And that over there is a uh, separate 
dead tree that we will eventually take down. Uh, but for right now, we're going to focus on this next big tree, number four, and cutting down the lower hanging limbs. Okay, so tree number four is finished. Uh, so you can see here I've got all these low hanging limbs trimmed back. So I can easily now walk underneath them. This one was kind of like tree three. Not as many low hanging branches as the first two trees. So really pleased with that, but glad to get a few that were a nuisance out of our way. And since this tree is so close to our second pile, I'm going to rake up this little bit of debris around the base and just sweep it over to this pile. All right, so we have the debris now swept up or raked up out from under tree number four. And the debris has been swept over here to our second pile. So I believe what I'm gonna do now is since I'm so close to this dead tree, I'm not gonna take it down, but any of the low hanging limbs that I can reach that are thin enough for loppers, I'll go ahead and trim those off, add those smaller limbs to the pile. And then once I do that, then I think I'll come over here to what we'll call really tree number five. Since it has some low limbs on it as well that have life in them. There's probably maybe a few dead branches about see too many, as many as some of the other ones I've had. So let's get to it. All right, all right I think I'm gonna go ahead and just call this tree number five. Uh, it's, it's mostly dead. There was a little bit of life on it. It did have some green leaves on it. However, uh, they're few and far between. I've gone around and the lower, thinner limbs that I could trim off, I've done that. And I got a little bit of debris. So I'm gonna rake those up and add that debris from tree five over here to pile number two. And then we'll get started on what we'll now call tree number six. Okay, tree number five, the debris been raked up and added to pile number two. All right, now we're going to trim the lower limbs, tree number six. Okay, so tree number six has been trimmed. You can see that the low hanging limbs on the canopy have been trimmed up to about a uniform height and the debris is around the tree on the ground and Dakota's in on the action. So I'm going to rake up these piles of debris and add them to our trusty pile number two over here that Dakota's gonna supervise. Okay, I've got the debris swept up or raked up from underneath tree number six and added to pile number two. It's about lunchtime. But if I just survey what we've done so far since starting yesterday evening, you can see from tree number one, tree number two, tree number three, tree number four, tree number five, tree number six, that you can see pretty well through and around the bases of these trees now without any low hanging limbs obstructing your view for the distance. After lunch, I may go continue back to this back section and see if there's anything. Some of these we did back in the spring, but I don't know if I want to do there or if I want to go over that light green leaves that you see behind that evergreen. That tree is probably one of the most obnoxious ones to mow under and around. So I may start over there after lunch, work around, trim up that fur a little bit or evergreen, whatever kind it is, and kind of work my way around to those other trees in the distance. So we'll see. Okay, so I've had lunch and this is the area that I worked on this morning. 
and last night so this trees uh, from looking from left to right it's tree one three in the far distance two five the small one in the foreground four and then over here is tree number six all right so you can see that I can see all the way through without any major low-hanging limbs obstructing my view. Now, over here in the back section on the remainder of this lot, uh, there's this evergreen tree. Uh, I'm not gonna touch it today. And then there's another really large tree. Fortunately, it doesn't have any low-hanging limbs, so I don't really need to do anything with it. And there's two small trees to its left. And there's two trees that are really close together that have overlapped each other. Uh, earlier in the spring, we trimmed the lower limbs of those and our took care of them. So there's not really anything I need to do here. Uh, the limbs that are kind of low are pretty thick and are gonna require a saw to cut through them. So I'll do that another day. Uh, instead of today where I'm focusing on uh, the smaller type limbs that can be handled with loppers. So that brings us to where I'm going now. So there's a dogwood tree and another evergreen tree. Uh, both of these trees, especially between them, uh, is a pain to ride a mower underneath and cut the grass. and. Um, so I'm going to really do some major shaping of this dogwood when we get rid of all the low branches and make the canopy up higher so I can easily ride around it and cut the grass that still easily grows beneath the tree. And uh, if not today, at some point in the near future, I'll probably trim back some of the lower limbs of this so that uh, I can cut the grass that goes in somewhat uh, under its canopy. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I've got it all trimmed underneath, a lot of debris underneath. So I'm gonna rake it up into a neater pile. And here comes the Donna's going to inspect my work. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've got the debris all raked up from around this dogwood tree. It's all here in a pile. And I wanted to show you a little up close that I'm gonna have to come back here later, if not today, maybe soon. And some of these really low branches coming out of the trunk, I'll need to uh, cut. So these two right here, they're sticking out really low. Um, are obviously going to be in the way of the lawnmower and then on this side some of these lower branches extend out outward the canopy is high enough to get under but as I get closer to the trunk it would be a challenge so those, those lower limbs for sure will probably go in. Some of these other ones um, start to go up soon enough that I think I'll be okay but the main thing that was the problem was just there was just so much uh, greenery way down to the ground so I managed to get all that down now you can see through most of the branches and the canopy is now more uh, reserved for the top area of the tree like I like it so that's it for this dogwood I think I'm going to take a break now and get some water since this one was a little bit more intense than some of the other trees from this morning and when I come back I think I'm, while I'm here on this side, I'm going to go ahead and trim around this um, evergreen. And when I do so, I'm only going to go in far enough so that where the grass stops and this weeds or whatever you want to call it start, that's going to be around the base of the tree. I don't need to go in that close. I just want to go around so like this part right here that sticks out beyond that area uh, is a nuisance when I'm coming around it with the lawnmower. So I'm going to be trimming some of these excessive low branches around 
so it's more comfortable to mow around this particular tree. Good morning. So I didn't get a chance to film uh, the last little bit of what I worked on yesterday, but before I do, uh, Dennis's dad uh, yesterday mid-afternoon came and he went ahead and cleared out the debris number one that was over there and the debris number two that I remember I think was over in this general area. So he's got the first two piles um, picked up. After he finished getting those first two piles, he then started to take part of this third pile that uh, was part of this dogwood. Now I know I mentioned in the previous clip that I was not going to trim too far in to the evergreen, but I changed my mind. As I got into it, I found a lot of dead limbs inside as I got further in. So I went ahead and trimmed a bunch of them back to the trunk. And as you can see, there's an ivy climbing up to that. So we may be working on how to get that down. But as you can see, I've probably done about three quarters of the way around. I already got another debris pile started on this. And made my way around to this side. So we've got about less than a quarter of a way to go around the base of this tree. Um, and even though this evergreen did have branches coming all the way down toward the ground, uh, I've created kind of a canopy effect with it as well. So that I'll be able to easily mow around here, maybe clean it up a little bit, but the rest of the evergreen will be fluffed out uh, above me when I'm standing up completely straight. And then there's some thicker branches that I'll need to probably saw off since they're too thick for the loppers. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue getting the rest of this done this morning. It's overcast, feels pretty comfortable out here this morning. And after this, over this way is this dogwood tree. It has a few low hanging limbs that I may or may not go ahead and knock out. Last night, Dennis and I were walking by here and there were some dead limbs that were easy to just snap off. So we've already done that, but some of these other low hanging limbs that have greenery on it, I may include in today's trimming. And that'll be it, because we've got some other uh, things to do today and I won't be able to do a full day of trimming today. Plus, uh, it might rain later this afternoon. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I actually finished uh, the last bit of trimming on this tree uh, early this morning, right before lunchtime. Um, I didn't film it earlier. Uh, Dennis's parents came by and uh, helped me uh, clean up the remainder of the third pile that was over by the dogwood tree and then uh, a couple piles that I had here under this evergreen tree. So as you can see, uh, it's been cleaned up. This is all just the remaining vines and we had trouble with the chainsaw not starting up. So we'll come back later, um, either on, on this video if it continues or if this video ends with this clip then maybe on a future video, we'll show uh, the cutting of these uh, stems that are sticking out from the trunk that I need to have out of the way so I can cut the grass. Uh, one other thing I do want to show you, back over this way, from earlier in the video, you may recall that when I did this first tree, uh, there was a small outgrowth and I cut it all down except for a stem. And you can see now that uh, this is that has uh, removed that stump or part of the root of this big tree. And so it's no longer in the way. So now looking at this backyard, there's no, well, other than this tree right here. Um, I had mentioned earlier that I would probably try to get a few of these low hanging lambs 
but because of some change in plans, uh, I've delayed doing that. So may get around to that, maybe on a future video, who knows? So we'll see. Hello, lonely flower. I bet you wonder if anybody pays attention to you. You're just blossoming all over here by yourself amongst all these other vegetation. So it's a beautiful evening now. Sun's getting ready to go down in about an hour. And the humidity's dropped and it's a nice breeze out blowing. And so we're taking the time to come out here and water some of our new flowers. We're gonna water some of our other plants. So today was kind of a, a break for us. We went up and had lunch with mom and brother about an hour from here. And I took a, took a day off from the yard work. So we're just taking a little bit of time to do some maintenance. Okay, so the Donna's had to go inside to take care of a business call. So I came on out here and watered all these plants that are in, I guess what you call a little grove area right here next to the pavilion. And I also came over here and watered the plants that are in the beds next to the entrance to the swimming pool as well as a couple of potted plants here that we don't have a permanent home for yet. So speaking of the swimming pool, a few days ago, um, we needed to still put the diving board in the steps and the rails for these steps. Um, but this is dad being the proactive man that he is. Uh, when he had the opportunity, he went ahead and did it himself. So uh, we did not have to assist him with that, though we would have gladly done so had we not been uh, occupied with another task, I guess, at the time. Um, so that's, that's the thing about Dennis's dad, is you have to admire him, is he, he likes to stay busy. He's always thinking of something to do. He can't just sit still which uh, is a great trait to have. Uh, it helps you live a long life. Now you may recall from a few videos ago when we trimmed the hedges around our front of our, inside of our house that uh, Dennis uh, cut this one back because it had grown up really high in front of our side porch here. And so as you can see, he cut it back and if I get in a little close, you can see it's got some greenery to it, but it's got a ways to go. Here's some fresh stems that are looking like they're trying to come back to life. So this one's got a ways to go. But his work on that shrub inspired me to butcher this one at the time. And it's got some green leaves on it that are starting to come back. So it's gonna take a while for it to recover back to what it once was. And I also really cut this one back. And as you can see, it's grown some green leaves as well. And then finally, out of this batch of shrubs, this one was really overgrown. You may remember how big it was at the corner of the house and that this Japanese maple was also growing close toward it. So I cut both them back to give us some space between them. But you can see now that it's got some green leaves on it, so it's starting to make its recovery. So I share this particular history of our recent Hackett jobs on some of these shrubs for a reason. All right, so this is the north side of Dennis's parents' house next door to us. And today, while we were up visiting my mom and brother and going out to lunch with them, uh, Dennis's dad uh, came out here and he trimmed back these forsythia bushes, or I think they call them uh, also yellow bell uh, bushes. Uh, they were getting 
pretty big and also they were growing out into the driveway. So today he trimmed them back. Dennis gave me the impression that they wanted to get these done because possibly they thought if I got a hold of them, they would be in much worse shape. And perhaps that might be true. So uh, crisis averted, they managed to get this taken care of before I had anything to do with it. But it looks really good, much better than I think I could have shaped them. And it served the purpose of getting some clearance for their driveway. So I think this will be a good stopping point for this video. It's probably run long enough tracking some of the latest uh, tree trimming and yard work that we've done over the past few days this week. So uh, our future yard work will be on some future videos. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like this video by giving it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below to let us know what you think. If you're not a subscriber, click the red subscribe button below. And keep up with our latest videos by clicking the notification bell. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out these other videos and we'll see you next time.